This is an introduction to vitamin A. So we're going to cover off the uh, dietary aspects as well as uh, symptoms of deficiency and the diseases related to vitamin A deficiency. And uh, look at some of the epidemiology of vitamin A deficiency uh, from a global perspective. So I'd like to acknowledge Professor Tom Sanders who passed on a number of these slides to me uh, when I inherited this lecture from him um, for the nutrition program at King's. So the learning objectives are to be familiar with the dietary forms of vitamin A and the units of measure, to have an appreciation for the physiological role of retinol, retinal, and retinoic acid, and be familiar with the dietary reference values and safe upper uh, intakes. So sources of vitamin A. Uh, retinol, or uh, active form vitamin A, is found in foods of animal origin. So these may be full fat dairy products, liver, or kidney. So these would be um, fat-rich tissues, um, or uh, as you can see, they're from dairy and fat-rich um, animal products. Provitamin A can be found in plant-based foods that contain beta-carotene and some of the other carotenoids, which can be converted into active vitamin A. So these include dark green vegetables such as cabbage and spinach, as well as orange and red vegetables such as carrots and peppers. So here's the structure, the chemical structure of beta carotene and shows you the process by which you can convert beta carotene into active form vitamin A or retinol as you can see over here but also the where parts of the beta carotene are lost and why it's not an efficient 100% conversion because you can also in the process convert retinoic acid. So basically the units of measurements for vitamin A are as follows one retinol equivalent is equal to one microgram of all trans retinol and so one retinol equivalent is equal to six micrograms of beta carotene or 12 micrograms of other carotenoids. Um, <clears throat> so you can see the conversion here is basically six to one or 12 to one, depending on the type of beta carotene, or sorry, the type of car carotenoid that you're referring to. So retinol equivalents uh, in foods are the sum of all the retinol that's available plus the carotenoids by the appropriate multiplication factor and then minus a factor to allow for incomplete absorption and conversion to retinol. So basically the equation is, as you see here at the bottom, very bottom of the slide, uh, retinol equivalent is equal to retinol plus the beta carotene divided by six. In terms of deficiency, xerophthalmia is the um, medical terminology used for severe vitamin A deficiency. And this is characterized clinically by night blindness, uh, xerosis of the cornea and the conjunctiva, as well as keratomalacia. And we'll get into a little bit more about this later in the lecture. So just focusing on the cell-mediated immunity and uh, childhood mortality aspect for a moment, you can see here in this graph three separate studies carried out over basically the last 80 years have demonstrated the link between vitamin A status and mortality as it pertains to um, uh, cell mediated immunity response to things like viruses and in this case it's the measles virus. So in England in 1932 or Tanzania in 1987 or a South African study in 1990 you can see that uh, the number of fatalities to the measles virus was significantly lower in groups of children which were supplemented with vitamin A compared to controls which did not receive vitamin A or had diagnosed vitamin A deficiency. So it has a very distinct impact when we look at it from a disease um, mortality perspective. Vitamin A deficiency generally has a has significant impact on global health. It's estimated that about two and a half million preschool children are subclinically vitamin A deficient. There's at least three million people who have clinical xerophthalmia which we'll get into this now in a few more minutes just so you get an idea of what this actually means. And about 300,000 people are blind because of the xerophthalmia, and this accounts for 10% of all blind children worldwide. So this heat map gives you an indication of where the vitamin A deficiencies are most prevalent and where they're not detected. And so you can see here that the darker green countries have what we refer to as a severe public health problem with low serum retinol concentrations. Because there's no well-established level of what is actual deficiency uh, in terms of a biomarker, 
we generally use this rule of thumb in terms of serum retinol concentrations being less than 0 0.7 micromole per liter as being a cutoff for deficiency. And you can see that the more highly developed economic regions tend to have less prevalence of low serum retinol, while most of the severe uh, levels, which is greater than 20% of the population, tend to be in areas which are generally economically underdeveloped. Now if you look at a similar heat map, but that describes night blindness, and this is data from 1995 to 2005, um, and you can see that this basically overlays very nicely with the data I just showed you on low serum um, retinol concentrations. And what it actually translates to in terms of prevalence of night blindness and the number of people affected by the population is that basically 1% of all preschool age children worldwide, uh, or in terms of numbers, that's about 5.17 million children, are have night blindness and pregnant women this accounts for worldwide approximately eight uh, percent or this is almost 10 million pregnant women suffering from vitamin A deficiency which has the clinical implications of presenting as night blindness. So the major groups at risk children between the ages of one and five uh, as well as individuals living in a developing country that has low fat intake, low diet diversity, and has endemic infection, especially intestinal infections. Uh, so countries where this is prevalent, generally related to infrastructure, sanitation, and medical coverage. So what does human vitamin A requirement look like? Well, in children aged one to six years old, roughly 400 retinal equivalents per day is sufficient to prevent any deficiency symptoms. In adults, both men and women, very similar levels required, and that's between 500 and 600 retinol equivalents. And there's no increase or very slight increase in terms of a requirement for pregnant women um, being at 600 retinol equivalents. And this is partly due to the fact that vitamin A is actually a teratogen when consumed in high concentrations. So the next couple of slides look at the physiology. So the absorption, because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, it is absorbed in the same uh, through the same mechanisms by which dietary fat and sterols are absorbed. So in the intestine, uh, broken down, some conversion takes place, but basically once absorbed, they travel with the colomicron through circulation and eventually returning to the liver. In the liver, it tends to be converted to retinal palmitate, which is basically the storage form of vitamin A. And once released by the liver into circulation to meet cellular needs, it's transported through the plasma by retinal binding protein and transdiglycerin to either the uh, cells of the eye or epithelial cells requiring other cells throughout the body. In terms of metabolism, here's how it looks. We already covered diet and input, so you consume it in the diet. Carotenoids are converted to retinal and retinoic acid, which retinal can be interconverted back and forth between retinol, and retinol can be esterified into retinol esters, which is the storage form. In terms of elimination, what you do is to remove uh, vitamin A from the body because it is a fat soluble vitamin. It can either be uh, conjugated with glucuronide or it can be oxidized to form various acids and it's eliminated via urinary excretion. So the mechanisms of action for vitamin A, why is it actually a vitamin? Well it was first identified as being vital based on the fact uh, of the impact it has on vision. Um, its visual functions are very uh, well understood and well um, documented. So the functionality of vitamin A in the eye is mediated through uh, the 11 cis retinol with uh, the opsin protein. We'll get a little bit more into this now in a second. And then, but there are also somatic functions of vitamin A, which has a very large influence on gene expression, which is mediated by retinoic acid and nuclear hormone receptors. So vitamin A in the eye, what you're seeing here basically is a cross-section through the eye showing you the anatomy where you have the lens, the cornea, the retina at the back of the eye. And the retina is what's main, mainly affected in the night blindness stages of vitamin A deficiency. However, as it progresses and becomes more severe, the actual cornea or the conjunctiva become affected where you get cirrhosis and beetle spots as well as keratomalacia. 
So a veto spot is, you can see right here, it's in the void of the eye or in the conjunctiva area, or sorry, not the conjunctiva, it's in the, the void portion of the eye on the cornea, and it looks like a dull scar or scratch or cloudy um, bubbling um, uh, lesion. I have a better photograph of this here now, the next slide. You also have a dulling of the cornea, so the cornea doesn't look as shiny anymore, and in the conjunctiva you get folding very, uh, very close to or immediately adjacent to the So the role of vitamin A in vision, 11 cis retinol forms a complex of rhodopsin in the rods and the iodopsin in the cones. The cis configuration allows the retinol to fit into a cleft in the opsin protein, and when a photon interacts with the rhodopsin, the configuration of the 11 cis retinol changes the trans. And uh, it's this switch between cis and trans isomerization that causes retinol to disassociate from opsin uh, and the bleaching of the pigment. And then the result is the release of energy and the membrane depolarizes. And then this is transmitted through the optic nerve. In terms of deficiency disease, what you're seeing here is the classification of xerophthalmia, where it starts here at the beginning with uh, night blindness and then progressing through conjunctival cirrhosis, veto spots forming, corneal cirrhosis, corneal ulceration, and keratomalacia, progressing through to a more severe corneal corneal ulceration, keratomalacia. Eventually you get corneal scarring and a xerophthalmic fundus. And then at this stage you're becoming blind. Uh, much more severe than just night blindness. Night blindness, if you're not aware, would look something like this. It'd be basically if you walk into a candlelit room or a very dull lit room, um, if this person here is person number one not suffering from night blindness, they would have enough sensitivity to be able to detect uh, the depth and perception of the room and whether or not to person, in this case a table with some fruit and a candle on the table. Whereas an individual with night blindness is not having the same reactions occurring in the eye, not as much to polarization. Um, and so all they're really seeing here is the intense light from the candle, but not getting the depth perception and the contrast of somebody with healthy vision. This is a clinical photo of a very large Beto spot. And you can see, like I said, it looks like bubbling uh, a white ulceration appearing here in the cornea. And then as it further develops, you get ulceration of the cornea. Uh, and um, obviously this would be uh, keratomalacia leading to blindness. So the other aspect of vitamin A action, which I described, was the somatic functions, which, an influence, which has an influence on gene expression. This tends to be mediated by retinoic acid in a cell. And um, the nuclear hormone receptors, uh, retinol X receptor, uh, retinoic acid receptor, as well as some other partner uh, nuclear hormone receptors, are responsible for the transcription of, uh, or sorry, the activation or active transcription or repression or suppression of the transcription of a number of genes. And some of this transcription or repression can be driven to a large degree by uh, the status of vitamin A. Basically, when a cell requires or has a need for retinol, uh, it will produce a particular receptor which recognizes retinol binding protein, which, at which time retinol ret the retinol binding protein will bind to this particular receptor, and the retinol is delivered to the cell. Then the, the retinol has several fates. It can be converted to 9-cis uh, retinoic acid or all trans retinoic acid and take part in uh, the translocation steps that are required to get it into the nucleus where it will interact with the nuclear hormone receptor, and thereby having uh, effect on gene transcription. I'm not going into much detail with this because it's, it's, it's too broad and it's much more um, of a topic onto itself, but as long as you remember the take-home point that it's that retinol is very central to, to the either the expression or suppression of um, gene transcription in, in some particular cases, um, that's really all you need to know. You can look up if you're a little bit more curious about where it actually has these types of effects. You can uh, look that up or find it in the further reading that you'll see at the slide at the end of the lecture. Basically, prevention is down to three key things, and that's dietary diversification. Uh, if you consume a, a, a well-varied diet, consuming the vegetables that I de described earlier that are uh, green leafies uh, or vegetables which are red or orange, you'll be consuming pro-vitamin A or beta-carotene, which can be efficiently converted into retinol. 
However, that's not always the case in all parts of the world, and that's why we see the very strong correlation between economic development and vitamin A deficiency. What you do also see is when you improve hygiene, even in these particular countries, and limit the um, effect of intestinal infection and the diarrheal diseases which are associated with that, when you reduce those in particular areas, actually, you improve the vitamin A status as well because you're not losing um, basically the food form um, through intestinal infection and through diarrheal diseases. Periodic oral supplementation with very high doses in children under five in endemic areas really goes a long way to preventing vitamin A deficiency. Because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, you can store it as retinol palmitate in your uh, retinol, sorry, palmitate in your liver, and therefore individuals who are suffering from deficiency or in very deficient environments would not be at risk of the toxicity aspect of this particular uh, vitamin. Therefore, high dose supplementation is, um, is basically a, a very key uh, way to prevent deficiency in these, in these populations. Here's an example of a child getting high dose vitamin A supplement. It's a very small amount. Basically, the vitamin A is in a capsule and uh, it's broken, and the vitamin A is squirted into the child's mouth and they consume it. I did mention several times that vitamin A can be toxic, and so retinol is toxic at intakes at 10 times the RDA. Symptoms include increased intracranial pressure and exfoliation, and they may be fatal. Symptoms would include fatigue, nausea, headaches, and skin peeling. And in pregnant women, it's been noted that vitamin A is a teratogen, and so women exposed to high doses of vitamin A, uh, or vitamin A analogs for that matter, uh, have reported birth defects in their offspring. The adverse effects are known to increase, also known to increase bone fractures when you have excessive supplementary retinol. Carotene can cause a non-toxic reaction actually in individuals, which is to basically turn their skin orange. Uh, this is referred to as anthocytosis. Uh, this occurs, uh, but again, this is non-toxic. It's more of a side effect of high doses of vitamin A or, car or sorry, carotene. And carotene supplementation has been linked to an increase in lung cancer in smokers. So this data comes from probably studies from about 15 to 20 years ago where they were trying to intervene in individuals who were smokers with an antioxidant approach, which included vitamin A, and uh, the studies were stopped prematurely because we were seeing increases in the rates of lung cancer in these individuals. In terms of vitamin A as a teratogen, here are some uh, schematics or uh, diagrams showing you the effect that it has in an animal study. It's known that vitamin A will actually um, cause the Hox genes to become expressed at inappropriate times. And then what this does is it impairs normal differentiation of cells and causes the malformation of limbs and general anatomy. And so individuals are, or um, uh, pregnant women are always counseled to avoid high doses of vitamin A and to consume, if they're consuming dietary vitamin supplements, to make sure they're in a form that has a reduced amount of vitamin A. Uh, there are also medications that people take, which are vitamin A analogs. These include uh, acne medications, uh, and these are also um, not advised for individuals who are also trying to become pregnant. And uh, depending on what jurisdiction you're in, you may be required to take a birth control pill while actually taking it. So these include things like Accutane. So that's a summary of the uh, vitamin A. So we looked at some of its metabolism. It's the... Uh, the uh, amounts required in the diet to prevent deficiency and what deficiency actually looks like. Here are two excellent um, suggested readings that I have for you that you should probably follow this lecture up with and use um, as supplementary material for the topic. They are both found in the Encyclopedia of Human Nutrition, which can be found through the library's website. Uh, if you're accessing it off campus, you need to log in through the library to make sure you get access to this particular, these particular chapters. But this is an online textbook and it, and it covers both the deficiency and interventions that are useful in vitamin A, and, but and also the chapter by Ross is looking at the physiology, dietary resources, and requirements on a larger scale. Any questions on the lecture, please feel free to either send me an email directly or use the frequently asked questions uh, option on the virtual campus.